In the house is Dr. Catherine, and I think it's Filippi. Uh, is Philippa. that right, ma'am? It's Philippi. Oh, I, I only had two ways to go, and I think <laughs> I think we did this last time. And I, I got to remember that Philippi, I, I, I have it now. Uh, so it'll never be um, done incorrectly again. Okay. Boy, what a controversy on this uh, formula. Of all the things that they, I thought that we'd be talking about, toilet paper, whatever it happened to be, baby formula was not on the list there. But it is. And uh, your thoughts about this? So it does worry me when the statistics on brain development between ages zero and in one year mm-hmm. are um, that that is when most of our brain development occurs and it's the most rapid time of brain growth um, formula is the statistics also show that babies that are three months of age about half are, are using some formula if not exclusively formula fed and that babies that are at risk born into lower socioeconomic situations are almost um, staggeringly formula fed. So it affects that population. And if you think about the formula shortage started when Abbott had to recall um, their formula due to bacterial contamination in February, and it's looking like they can restart production in two weeks from now, but they're not expecting that to hit the shelves for eight to 10 weeks. So then you have close to six months of that first year of life where extreme stress in a situation where gas is going up at the pump and parents are nervous. Um, And then also, um, you know, stretching formula that they have. Um, We worry about babies getting formula that is not FDA approved. We worry Mm -hmm. about parents supplementing with things like goat's milk, which is unsafe. Um, We worry about parents mixing the formula dilute dilute so that it stretches the formula to to last longer. And um, those things can cause really, really severe blood disorders um, and even seizures. At at what age did you say that you could start weaning them off of the formula itself. So the, re- the recommendation is a year, but with these mm-hmm. formula shortages, there are some toddler formulas available that people will choose sometimes to switch um, a child to at a year of age. Yeah. Um, I would say at nine to 10 months, if you absolutely cannot get your hands on formula, mm-hmm. I might um, approve if the baby was very healthy the use of those toddler formulas at that time. But, you know, Abbott makes some of the very specialized formulas that exist for babies with severe digestive diseases or metabolic disorders who cannot take other formulas. Um, And you're just opening a can of worms. The the most elemental formula that they make, um, those babies are severely um, failure to thrive. Mm -hmm. They have... Um, severe gastrointestinal issues, and I can only imagine what the outcome of six months without a formula like that would be. Is is it is? And I don't know this uh, question. Is it culturally something that uh, you said the minority group uh, in the minority poorest of the the of the state? There's not a lot of breastfeeding going on. Is that cultural? Is it physical? What, what, and I, I have no idea what the rates are. Well, the you know the pendulum has swung for sure as we've become more educated. In the past, formula, mm-hmm. the distant past, formula wasn't as readily available, and um, breastfeeding, um, of course, was the more natural way to go. But no one understood the importance nutritionally and um, mm-hmm. immunologically about. Um, the 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 use of breast milk and so once we you know became a more um educated society about that we have tried really hard to encourage people to breastfeed um i you know personally i i don't give this story to every patient that walks through the door but i had I, i was a pediatric resident i had completed my third year of residency when i had my first child and i thought you know breastfeeding is the only way to go and i had great difficulty and it caused me a lot of shame and um difficulty 
bonding that the breastfeeding deal did not go as well as I had hoped. Mm -hmm. Um, I do share that with parents that come in struggling, but I think that in general, um, if you don't have that education, if you don't have someone speaking that truth into your ear and encouraging you through a difficult time. Um, well, usually in in the old days, you had the mother who sure. breastfed, so she could pass that on down to her daughter. I understand that. Let, let, let me ask you about the formula because when we when we were uh, coming up, we we didn't have any formula. We, we we made our own. They made our own as far as Kero syrup and and pet milk uh, and 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 that. And I think a lot of people are getting back to that as we speak now. As a matter of fact, we had a uh, renowned chef on yesterday, uh, Robert St. John, and he was giving a formula that he's actually pulled up. Uh, your thoughts on parents, if they do this in the right way, is that something that you recommend? Or what's your thoughts on preparing your own fresh formula? I discourage that. I feel like... Um even I, with the medical knowledge that I have, would not trust myself. Mm-hmm. Babies are extremely fragile the first three months of life. And if you introduce um, bacteria or viruses through the production process, um, you know, we we also heard about um, an infant recently that got botulism from honey. Um, which, you know, I ha- I still have grandparents that come yeah. in and, and recommend honey for constipation. Um, we just know that e- even under the best of circumstances, there's more nutritional value added to formula. It's there for a reason. It's controlled. Yeah. It's safe. Um, so I would not recommend making your own. The... Um the situation worsened itself because I think uh, uh, Abbott was, is Abbott the only one that supplies WIC, W-I-C? I'm not sure about that. The contract switches um, from from year to year, and yeah. I, I believe that that's the truth. Um, but right now there are three um, major formula producers, mm-hmm. and, you know, it would be like if we had three major car makers and one whole car maker was out of business and then we have the supply chain problem um two car makers can't make up the difference so about 43 percent um of the shelves are empty is what the statistics looked like last week i i i haven't seen any solution to that from the administration that's that gives us hope other than they're working on it but when you send a large portion of your production, certainly now when you're trying to uh, get back on tap uh, as far as the supply chain is concerned, when you send a large produ- a, a part of your production to WIC, that means there's less and less on the shelves out there. And I think that contract is something they had uh, a mandate for, so they couldn't get out of it. But my understanding also is when you go get WIC, you get the entire month's worth. So you don't get just you know a can for that week or two weeks you have to get the a whole allotment at that particular time and also there was uh, unveiled a uh, pallet after pallet truck after truck of baby formula that apparently showed up on the border to handling the people who were crossing so there's so many other things that go into this politics uh, is one of them as we well know we'll uh, we'll return to this and talk more with uh, Dr. Catherine Philippi, pediatrician, Trust Care Kids. And by the way, if you've never been by Trust Care Kids, I got grandkids who just, oh, it, it's, you got to make one for old people, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, may, maybe a shuffleboard somewhere in there. We'll talk more when we come back. Little segment here, we're talking baby formula. Have you heard any uh, that, uh, any hope at all that uh, th- this is going to be alleviated Uh, in the next several weeks? I just read that in two weeks they will Mm -hmm. resume production, but that that the formula company does not expect the shelves to see the impact for eight to ten weeks. It is amazing that they've been down this long from really bacteria, and also that they let that factory get that bad in the first place. But um, uh, we talk about germs from goat milk or honey. Uh, I I think this is going to... Maybe this will start a trend for parents uh, in the early days of pregnancy to listen a little bit more as far as breastfeeding is concerned. 
And definitely, I should mention, there are breastfeeding banks for children who might be at risk or who parents who would be interested in donated breast milk. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, I feel like that is something that we do, uh, you know, have available that some parents may not be aware of. So, I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that on the internet? I'm sure there's a Mississippi yeah. breast milk um, bank that, especially for babies that have special needs or that um, are premature, um, it just would offer yeah. a, another option. Um, it, it it would be something to certainly uh, look into. Let's let's talk about the COVID for a moment or two. How's it look there as far as uh, some of the patients you're seeing? So definitely the last two weeks, we have seen a trickle of COVID. Um, Mm -hmm. We have done more swabs specifically to contact trace. And of course, infants that are staying with a grandparent during the day and the grandparent has turned positive. I'm not hearing that um, the, you know, the initial contacts are very sick or in the hospital. And my husband is actually working in the hospital and he's not seeing, you know, a lot of patients mm-hmm. that have it yet. But of course, we all have post traumatic stress disorder. Oh, absolutely. And we're panicking yep. a little bit. I am anxious mm-hmm. to hear about um, the vaccine being released for a younger age group. It mm-hmm. looks like maybe June will be the target for that. Um, and we need that because, of course, you know, we, we don't have any options for treatment if they do get it i have lost count on what this one is called you know we went we went to through several uh, different sure. varieties and this so, one is is got a number to it or something well no the omicron variant is just still present and we is it yes we okay. are seeing it resurface um obviously it's probably mutated but the patients we've had some providers that turned positive um both in my husband's world and in my Mm -hmm. world and um they've done really well because they've had three doses of immunization when you look at the common cold it is contagious is it not oh yes how do they gauge this because this has been almost like a covid coal as far as the symptoms i'm not not going to going to try to make the the symptoms worse than they are sometimes people just have a few sniffles uh maybe a little cough and that's it and they they had no idea that they had a uh, uh, omicron or uh covid right but the symptoms are very very similar to just a common cold most definitely and for me you know i i would fear that i would um spread it to I'm thinking of a set of twins Mm -hmm. that I take care of that are premature and have chronic lung disease. And, you know, that mom is a working mom and, you know, she has to take her children places in the world, whether it's the grocery store or daycare or whatever. And, you know, the common cold for them would be devastating if it's COVID. So, well, and, and, and that's one of the things I think the pandemic has done whether it's a common cold or the flu or whatever it is, I think we're going to be more health conscious when we're going to some of these places now, especially hospitals and uh, medical centers and things such as that. Sure. Your final thoughts here as far as the uh, the formula situation that we're in and your advice to mothers. Well, I would just encourage the mothers that are struggling to reach out to their provider. I think that even um, in my practice, we have had patients that just walk in for an urgent care and then have questions Mm -hmm. about it. I think that um, if you don't have a provider that will reassure you and help you find resources, you need to find one that will because we we have to join together and help get these families through this time. I think that lots and lots of money is spent on adults who are over 65, which is great in our country. Babies sometimes get forgotten because they're very resilient, which is one of the reasons I love taking yeah. care of them. But this is this is a big deal. And for someone who was born during this formula shortage and doesn't have access to breast milk, you're looking at maybe six months of not getting nutritionally superior um, food. That is scary. Absolutely scary. 
Well, Doc, thank you so very, very much. I always appreciate it, and I think we need more. We know more now than we did before. But again, uh, there's so much on the internet, and some of it uh, <laughs> you got to be careful. <laughs> you just got to be careful from the formulas too, yes. because I've seen some of that, and uh, uh, I don't think you mean. I don't think Budweiser is part of that, <laughs> even if the kid is a little cranky. So right. be careful, <laughs> Doc. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate Thanks. it very much. Uh, that is Dr. Catherine Philippi, a pediatrician, Trust Care Kids, and you can find more information at uh, Trust Care Health uh, on uh, Twitter.